in um, 94. It is interesting to me how I was only there for um, five years from 89 to 94 and how much happened in that short time. Very, very excited about that. And maybe when we have questions and answers, we can talk more about that if, you, if you're interested. Well, let's see what we got here. Okay. So through, there, through art history, there's thousands of artists, you know, and it's uh, numerous and um, unlimited. But the, the ones that really stand out for me have always spoken to me throughout my whole um, career and still do. And Hans Holbein, the younger, I guess his father was an artist. He's from uh, Germany or Northern Europe. And he's right from around, was born in 1497. So there's something about his work, about the clarity and the simplicity and the strength of it all that I find extremely um, appealing to my, to my well-being. So this is one of his. And here's, a, here's another uh, one from the Met that I actually had the opportunity to copy when I was a copyist at the Met God, in, in the 80s. It was a really great way to study. So they seem, there's something very contemporary and real about these people. So anyway, and also if you notice, there's very little shadow on their face, which I think is the most flattering way to paint somebody. Um, and it's, he seemed like, to me, he seemed like very ahead of his time. So this artist, his name is Corneille de Lyon. He's from France, also 1500. And the only place I've seen, these are, these are tiny little portraits, maybe five by seven, something like that, eight by 10. And I've only seen them at the Indianapolis Museum of Art and at the Met in New York. And um, again, there's something very wonderful about his work and very contemporary feeling. There's a minimal quality. Anyway, maybe you can get that also. So then we jump to the Dutch school and Rembrandt, of course, this is at the Indianapolis Museum, this young portrait of Rembrandt, um, who is um, his year 1606 when he was born. And we all know that um, he has survived through all these years um, with his sense of humanity and his love, love of life and his brilliant interpretation of humanity. This is a close up. Not all these slides are so great. If, you were, if we were at the museum, it would be much more magnificent to look at these, but you can see his texture and how he builds up the surface to actually suggest uh, form, uh, whether it's anatomy, uh, wrinkles, um, bone structure. It's kind of amazing how it catches the light. So he's one of my main heroes. Then we have Velasquez, who's Spanish, and he's also like 1600. And um, of all the people I've ever spoken to or feel that I respect, we, we all believe that Velasquez is one of the top five painters that ever lived. And there's something about the spontaneity and the clarity of his work and the freshness of it that is just brilliant. So this, this was his servant, Juan de Pareja of, of Velasquez. And this is, I think, one of his most famous paintings. And it's called uh, The Triumph of Bacchus. And um, I'm sure this must be at the Prado in Spain. And it's really, it's sort of mind boggling to me how, um, how beautiful it is and how real these people appear. So this is another uh, Velasquez. He did um, paint some of the dwarfs that were living um, in the kingdom, you know, uh, and um, I always found them really humorous and really beautiful. Yeah, he honored them beautifully. So it's really, really cool. And this definitely is at the Prado. So then we jump to Vermeer. He's also um, Dutch in the 1600s. A Girl with the Pearl, one of the most famous paintings ever. Um, he only, there's only 34 of his paintings, um, that have survived. Apparently he only did 50 and he only lived to be 43. Um, so his paintings to me are extremely magical. They're almost surreal. This is not the best slide in the world, but, uh, this one is, happens to be at the Met. And, um, I just love his sense of design, um, 
Let's see if, we, oh shoot, okay. Well, anyway, we jumped um, out of that pretty quickly. You know, it's, it's hard because there's so many great works through history and to edit them down to these few is not exactly fair, but anyway, that's what we're doing. So this is uh, Courbet and Courbet and Corot, which we're gonna see a few of theirs, are forerunners to the Impressionists. They're both French, um, early 1800s. And um, yeah, and, and there's something about, I find their work very um, contemporary also. And I love the way that their use of paint. I love this, this landscape. It kind of reminds me of some of the areas in Colorado. I'm in New Mexico, but this is, as you, as you go north, you get more, more green. This is kind of a strange one for Corbet. Uh, Life-size figures of these two women. And again, it's not the best light in the world, but it's kind of um, fascinating that he would have painted this in, in, the, you know, um, in, 18, in the early 1800s. And this is Corot, very romantic, very soft uh, landscape painter. And again, that's one thing that I loved about living in New York for 10 years, is going to the, going to the, to, to the Met and studying these masters and trying to understand how they were able to achieve what they, what they have uh, with their palette, with their colors, their paint surface. That's really what is so important is how do the, how do they transfer from the palette to the canvas? How do they get that beautiful richness and how do they bring life to the surface? And this is another uh, Corot, a little bit different, more of a painterly approach than the last one we saw, but this is gorgeous. This is at the mat. And also it has a very contemporary feeling considering it's, and like 1850. So now we jump into the Impressionists, and this is, uh, of course, Monet, uh, 1840 to 1926, and um, broke the rules. The Impressionists really suffered in parts of their lives. I think later on, for sure, uh, Monet was very well off, very successful, very sought after. And um, anyway, I love his work. I think everybody does. Just so beautiful. Another Monet, uh, again, this is a little bit fuzzy, but you can get a feeling of how he loves the paint and the colors and the beauty of nature. Of course, very famous for his water lilies. Um, if you go to the Museum of Modern Art in uh, New York, they have that huge room with the, it's all filled with this mural of water lilies all the way around the room. Quite remarkable. And again, it's really important when you go to look at the work to get close so you can see the paint quality, how the paint is on the canvas. It means a lot to me. Then we, then we have Van Gogh, um, 1850 to 1890. He only lived to be 37. Um, I think this might be at the Art Institute, this self-portrait. And he created a whole new uh, language as every artist does, but in his case, even more so, I believe. If you've, ever, if you've ever seen his uh, drawings, his pen and ink drawings, you get a sense of how his brush strokes worked and really um, magnificent. And here's just another landscape by Van Gogh. There's a lot, lot of energy in his work. I think he painted it really fast. I don't know if he painted two paintings a day or what, but really magnificent. This is a real famous one of that, um, that pub um, in the south of France. And it's interesting to just see his um, interpretation of colors and the light going around those light fixtures is really cool. I think it's really beautiful. His, the direction of his brush strokes, how he builds up the surface, really, really fascinating. Then we go to one of my main heroes, um, Degas. And Degas is from 1834 to 1917. And what's so amazing to me about Degas is his combination of classicism and modernism. And what I mean by that is he did study um, within the ateliers, the academies in France and Paris to learn how to be an academic draftsman before he broke away and, and created his own, his own vision, which this is very clear that, you know, the, the, the portrait, very academic, very beautiful, and then he, and the guitar, and then other pieces of it um, are finished, and then there's a whole 
whole areas that are just sketched in, that are just masked in as just a shape, which I find really incredible. And, his, and then his sense of composition to me is he breaks a lot of the rules, um, how we'll have something going off the canvas, throw somebody in there, we'll see, let, let's go further. Uh, like this bather, it's just so dynamic seeing just her back and how she's stretching and chair on the left side of the canvas that's just coming off the canvas and whatever's going on in the background, it just, it just really blows me away. And his sense of, his knowledge of anatomy and light and form are brilliant and very, very um, accomplished in that way. And again, I love how he can just let go. And that's, that's not easy, I've been trying to do that forever. And this is, of course, he's famous for his dancers. And again, what a brilliant composition of these three women and how they take up the whole canvas. I think this is a pastel. Later on in his life, he had, his eyesight was going, and so he did um, these uh, broad pastel paintings. Um, it was easier to express himself, I believe. So then we go to... Um, uh, Thomas Aikens, who again is one of my major heroes. This painting is at the Met. This was his wife and his dog. And he did also study in France um, with, with Jerome in one of the ateliers. Jerome was a very tight classical artist um, in the salon. And then he brought it back to Pennsylvania, to Philadelphia, where he was a resident and he's from. And he got hell for this painting. Uh, the water hole, and I believe that the person in the lower right-hand corner is, is Thomas Aikens, but it was rejected from what I remember reading, um, which is so unfortunate because I think it's one of his all-time best paintings because of the male nudity. And we see that in this charcoal drawing that he did, which is very famous, that the woman back then, and I'm looking at his years, he um, he said so this would be the, the early 1900s, or late 1800s, where women that were posing in these schools in the Pennsylvania Academy would have to wear a mask, pretty, pretty bizarro. Although not from today, but you know, from those days, it's kind, of, it's kind of crazy. And also Thomas Akins was very interested in photography. And um, so he, you can see how he has this guy doing the broad jump and how he captured him. I think it's really remarkable for, for that time period, again, around 1900, very much ahead of his time. Windsor Homer um, from the Boston area in Maine, um, also in the late 1800s, early 1900s. I love his, his seascapes have very much inspired me forever. And this painting is at the Met. It's a fairly, fairly large painting and I just love the energy and the vitality of it, and of course the paint quality again is huge for me. And this one, um, I don't know the name of this, but I should know it's also at the Met of this little parade of this family that looks like they're slaves, you know, that they're on some plantation. But I think it's just such a beautiful composition and so exquisite with the figures. I love how simple the landscape is also behind them. So then we have, uh, of course, um, Edward Hopper, who will be my last artist in this Old Master series. And he lived from the late 1800s to 1967 in New York on the East Coast. And this lighthouse painting is so famous. This is at the Met. And you've probably seen it um, many times, even in hospital corridors. Um, I love his use of light and shadow, the way he uh, sculpts with the light and defines the form, it's really magnificent. Just, and I love, you know, the clouds, there's so much about this. And then one of his most famous painting is called Nighthawks, which is at the Art Institute, and how um, these people are lonely in this town, and how, um, how intense that is. And then again, look at the beautiful lighting. So the next part of this will be um, a one minute video when I was in, one of my summers in California where I often will go to get away from the heat of New Mexico. And this videographer came up to me and asked me if he could take some pictures of me. And the next thing I know, I got an email from him with this, with this video and he was very generous. Um, let's see if I can get this thing going here. Okay. 
let's see what we got going. Let's see if we can get this going. Okay, here we go. Come on. So, okay, cool. So, um, by the way, I, I had no idea he was filming me, so it's really a wonderful surprise. And his name, I think, is Stan Rosen, and he's a, a professional. So I feel really blessed that he, was, he did that for me. So um, now I'm, I'm still in art school. Um, this is probably in the, like around 1980. Um, and I did this painting by, um, Philip de Champagne, uh, a Renaissance artist from France. And the only thing I changed, and this was at the Milwaukee Museum of Art, and it's, um, they let me, I did it life size 36 by 30. I changed the French into Hebrew. And um, it, was a, it was one of the best teachers I've ever had is copying the masters. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, whoops. Okay. Um, hang on one second. Hey, Stacy, I need to back up for a second. Can you just um, show me how to do that? Is it this one? Okay. Just we're just going to back up for one. That kind of went. For... Great. So this is a painting by Murillo, Madonna, and Child. Uh, one of the, another copy I did at the Met of a Spanish uh, Renaissance painter. Okay. Let's do this. What's going on here, folks? Um, sweetie, it's it's stuck. Stacy, yeah. it's not moving forward. And how are we doing here on time? It's not moving forward. Oh, oh, I see. Well, because it was over there. Is that why it is? Okay. So this is um, my graduation painting from the Art Students League in 1983. It was in Hell's Kitchen, a five-story walk-up, and a self-portrait with model, which is a pretty uh, common theme. And in some ways, it was, uh, anyway, it was a huge accomplishment for me at the time. And this is a reversal of, um, of the model with me. And, I'm, and this was a six foot canvas by four and a half feet wide, six feet high. So it was uh, probably the most ambitious thing I've ever done. And that was back in like 83, 84. And Blanca was her name from Argentina. Beautiful woman and great, great dancer. Great studio. But Gina was from Mexico and came. We did three paintings together, and this is the second of three. And it's still one of my all time favorites. I call it my Mona Lisa. And I don't do many still life, but this is one of them that I did way back then in eight, uh, like 84. And um, I really like the composition. That one sold immediately. I think it's kind of cool. So, um, so that's it for New York. Now, um, this is in 89, living um, in um, on Pontiac mm -hmm. Street, but this is um, High in Highland Park. And this is um, right, the railroad tracks right near the library as you're heading, I think that's heading west. Mm -hmm. Yeah, west towards the west side. And um, very influenced by Hopper and anyway. I really like this painting. It was a, quite a challenge. And this is the first painting that I did when, I, when we landed in from New York to, to Lafayette and um, on Pontiac Street. 
And I remember saying to my students in New York that the first thing I'm gonna do is paint a tree. And I loved it. And this is probably about two by two feet. So it's very, very, it was really a lot of fun. And you can kind of build, you can kind of see the textures of the, of the bark. And uh, this is Mary, Mary Louise Bone. Um, yes, I just wanna make sure I've got her name right, which I'm sure I do. Uh, yeah, Mary Louise Bone. She was, so when I left New York, I wanted to paint older people. I'd painted so many beautiful young women. And so when I, when I landed in Indiana, I painted a number of older people. And she was incredible. Really amazing. And this very much Degas-like to me as far as the dress and whatnot, the drapery, uh, the environment. And this was a man who came to uh, visit his daughter uh, from Beijing, uh, who was, and she was at Purdue. And he posed for me and he, uh, I was paying him and of course giving him English lessons. It was incredible. It's one of my all time favorite paintings. And I had that little canary in my studio at the time. And so I really love this painting. And there's Toad Weaver who um, was graciously uh, posed for me. And, I need to give a little pitch to uh, Kathy Cox because she was the one that introduced me to these, some of these people. And that was very sweet of her. And Toad was so funny. Um, I told him I wanted to get some real barn wood for this, for the, to frame this. And he gave me a saw and he said, well, there's that shed out there. You can get as much as you want. And he was, it was really cool. And a friend uh, made the frame. And it's really lovely. And this is about two by two feet. Really, really, that was amazing working with him in the dead of winter. And then this is um, George McNally. I did, I think, his six or seven uh, uh, portraits for the university. And George wanted it to look like a painting rather than a portrait commission. So he, we posed in his dining room. And you can see there's an art book on the table and some of his art uh, objects around him and some of his artwork around him. And he's from the school. He was the dean of the School of Technology way back when. But um, it, is, it is one of my favorites uh, that was done for the university. This is Mary Louise, um, Mary Elizabeth Payton, um, the daughter of the, the Truitts, of uh, Patty, Patty Truitt. And I asked her to pose for me, and she did. And she had come back from Europe and uh, from Italy, I believe, had this beautiful little apartment. And um, it feels very European to me. It has this really beautiful... Um, feeling and I like and I love the composition and she was just a joy to, to get to know. And this is uh, Eva Johnson who was living right outside of Lafayette and she was in her 90s and I did a, uh, a, another painting of her first um, and this she'd be sitting by the window waiting for me to show up. She was pretty lonely. She outlived two husbands and what, what was interesting is uh, the siding, the uh, asphalt siding, I had put sand in the paint to get that surface, but I but it's a really really a special painting, and she was a really special person. And um, each spring we would catch a mouse, and I call this Victor. I do, I only did two paintings of these. One sold immediately to an entomologist, and the other I I still have. And I love the composition with uh, the tail and whatnot. So anyway, that was a fun one. So now we're in New Mexico back, this, this is 94, and I was painting very academically, meaning very tight, very realistic back then for landscapes. And um, you'll see very quickly how they've evolved. But this is the Sandias, it's, it's amazing to be out there. The other thing that happened when I, when we, when I moved here in 94 is I started to be in, inspired by Pueblo pottery and how it's painted and, um, and decorated and so beautiful. So it's not just that the shape is beautiful, but they, the way the motif is on the pottery. So the frames became, um, started decorating my frames. I, I painted them to match the portrait and this woman was from Mexico. And it's one of my all time favorite paintings. Uh, Marcel, her name is. And this is Yanawa, she's African American and you can see the same thing was happening here. Um, brought the inside to the outside and the whole thing is a piece of art. Really, really uh, exciting. And that was something that I would never have expected for myself. Another one of those, um, Judith Rafis, who's a costume designer, um, very influenced by Gustav Klimt. And, um, and she really can pull it off. And there's a lot of gold in this one. 
and I'm, yeah, I really love this rhyme, and I love her. So here we are in the Sandias again. I'm starting to loosen up. These are, uh, this is the foothills, and you can start to see some of the wild flowers blooming, probably in the fall. And this is um, an afternoon painting. And another um, scene, but this, this, that one was looking east, this one's looking west. And so, um, anyway, that's, hang on, I'm just gonna let the family leave. Thanks, thanks for going out, Stacy. I'll let you guys look at this, absorb this. This is a, um, a juniper tree. And the city is way in the background. Those are actually the volcanoes, like that, those mountains way back there are the volcanoes. Anyway. So here's another of these um, frames that was designed, carved by a man. This, these are the upper, the headstone has like uh, pieces of cemetery plots from Eastern Europe. This is a friend of mine from Chicago who posed for me and um, it looks like a headstone. It was inspired by the Holocaust Museum in DC, this painting. My father's in there, my mother, and of course, Anne Frank. And it's my Holocaust Memorial painting. And uh, if, for those that don't are not aware, my parents were Holocaust survivors from Poland. So this has a lot, a lot of meaning for me. And I would love to see it placed in, um, in a memorial center. So hoping that that will happen. Uh, this is a commission of Christ, uh, Divine Mercy, six-foot canvas um, at uh, St. Bernadette's Church here um, up in the Heights. And um, that was commissioned by a friend of mine for, uh, for me to paint him, to paint Christ for the church. So that was, that's probably my best commission ever. And I'm very excited to have it there. So this is um, my copy of a Rembrandt self-portrait done later, more recently in 2008. And um, you'll see a self-portrait that was done, that, which is also on your announcement, that was very much inspired by this painting of Rembrandt. I've learned a lot from copying him. And um, not that this, not that I'm Rembrandt or anywhere near him, but you can see some of, maybe some of the influence of Rembrandt and um, of the, the paint quality and the texture and all that good stuff. Oops. So this is um, an interior of my studio, just a very academic um, painting of this nude uh, lying on the floor, very mysterious. Her girlfriend um, helped design this composition and my studio is a lot more cluttered than this, but it really, um, but the mantle and all that is pretty much the way it is right now with all these beautiful art objects. And she was just a real joy to work with. And the floor does have radiant heat so she was not cold. So, and it's a real special painting. Uh, this is uh, Don Schrader, who um, is uh, very, he's the most not notable uh, Albuquerquean for his political views and his, um, his, his, just his whole ideology and his whole being, very much a, a piece. He was a Mennonite pastor from Indiana, from actually from Southern uh, Illinois. And he, um, really, really a fascinating person. This is a mixed media with some beads for his um, stones, for his necklace, and then that's fabric for the, for the rose. But a very gentle, so wonderful human being. So now I'm in California and things really took off for me when I went there. I was staying in a monastery in Big Sur called the New Camaldoli for the summers of um, 2009, 10, and 11. They let me stay there. I had to work half a day and then I would go out to the ocean and paint for the other half and then come back and pray and meditate with them. And so to capture the, the energy of the, of the ocean really um, grabbed me. And um, I started working with bigger brushes, went into wet, palette knife, and it started to change my landscapes dramatically. Something I've want, wanted for my whole life. Here's just another, another seascape. From that, from that area of Big Sur. Not quite as dramatic, but pretty, pretty cool. And then I, they commissioned me, the, the monks commissioned me to do a Madonna for them, which is in their chapter room. And, um, and I'm very proud and honored to have this painting there. And they do sell um, prints of this or chiclets or whatnot um, 
and it's really beautiful. And it's not a very big painting, the original. I think it's only like 16 by 12. And she's a really beautiful uh, woman who posed. So here we are kind of in Martinez town with this church, uh, which is near Old Town. And very, a little bit of Hopper. I'm thinking of Hopper. I'm thinking of a lot of people. And um, kind of a, a dynamic painting because it's kind of in the ghetto of, of Albuquerque. And you can kind of see it's up on this hill and this guy's sitting there probably having a, a glass of beer by this uh, beat up truck. Anyway, I have another painting of this church, which I don't think is in this uh, presentation, but it's really cool to paint. So I'm back in the foothills of Albuquerque and this is one of my favorite spots of this um, red rock, really dynamic and um, really powerful just the way the light captures the, the structure of the rock. And again, the sky, I love the sky. So here we are, a much, much more, much more impressionistic, this juniper tree. And um, yeah, I really like this painting for that, for how I'm breaking away from tradition, from my tradition, and let cutting loose. I've been trying to do that my whole, my whole career. Here's some more, this is a, these are Chamisa, which is uh, in the foothills. Um, right now they're in high bloom and I'll be out there tomorrow working on a Chamisa painting in the afternoon, probably from four to 6 p.m. It's been getting dark here around between 6 and 6.30. So yeah, I'm in love with these Chamisa. And this is that same rock um, and much more um, loose, much more uh, color and vibrant. This is one of my favorite paintings of that rock. This is up in the Sandias. And this is a still life that, um, of, a, of, a, of a buffalo. It's probably, it's probably three by three feet, so it's life size. And I uh, spent a lot of time on it. And I, so when I go back in the studio, I will go back to my roots of being more academic and more realistic. Um, the background has some really interesting texture and a surface that I, that I respond to. And, um, and I love the shadow and anyway, it has a real Trump eye, which is full the eye, it really looks 3D. This is um, Frida Kahlo, a painting of Frida Kahlo I did for a fundraiser. We made prints of this and they, they raised some money for this little town I was living in in TRC, which is two hours south of here. And um, a friend made the frame, this tin frame uh, designed after an antique Mexican frame. And I love this painting and I, and I still own it. And that's uh, white gold behind her. And Frida's a real icon here in the Southwest and maybe she is there too. Anyway, and here I am in, um, back in, on, on the coast in California in Point Lobos State Park, one of the most beautiful places in the country. And I um, spent a summer 2000, I think it was, um, oh gosh, what year was that, 15, 16? Uh, living, living in uh, PG Pacific uh, Grove, which is right by Monterey, uh, painting, painting up a storm. And here, this is in PG, and I love, love this painting. It has a more of an abstract quality, a little bit more contemporary, very free. And um, yeah, and I really, really enjoy that. Again, this is something that's driving for my whole life. Uh, this one really, really is cut, cut loose. This is 30 by 40 inches, so it's fairly large. And painting plain air, all these are painted on location, all the landscape. I really believe in responding to God's beauty and being out there and being you know, like a vessel to um, receive uh, what's, what's, what's there, the beauty. It really blows me away. Another one um, on the coast near in Pacific Grove. Just uh, really, really dynamic, very free, loose, and um, nothing like uh, Windsor Homer, you know, one of my main heroes that we saw earlier, but still lots of beauty, lots of strength. I'm pretty excited to see these. So I, I, when I was living down in TRC, Truth or Consequences, I was getting ready for a big show down there um, about five or six years ago. And I was living with the family for six months. And I saw this fire hydrant on the street and it's, the painting is life-size, so it's like a little over three feet, and um, really had a great time. Wayne Tebow, the contemporary American artist that lives on the coast in the Bay Area, really inspired this for me. 
So I guess the, 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 the thing is, is that we're always, artists are always thinking about people that inspire you and um, trying to um, remember some of their ideas. So anyway, so I love this painting. And this is a, a man, his name was Sonny, and he posted me down there. He was like this real, really fascinating person in the Southwest, one of these real characters. And he just posed for me out of the goodness of his heart. And I had it in that show down there in TRC. And um, anyway, it's really nice looking at it again. And this is a fairly large painting. I, I was going to this man's ranch every day and he had these animals and these are, you know, donkeys. And I fell in love with his donkeys. I did about five or six paintings of them and all of them sold. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah, this is really cool. And that's, this is, as I said, this is a fairly large painting for me. I love, I love the freshness of it. And so Delmas Howe is the main cheese down in TRC. He's famous for his erotic rodeo paintings. He's obviously gay. And he just had literally today, it, today, um, October 22nd, he's turning 85. And he let me paint him and then I wound up giving this painting to the gallery where the show was. And it's kind of, and these are just a fantasy of some of the, some of the men in his paintings, um, which is pretty kind of interesting. All right, so um, this is a truck from uh, Taos. I, I painted a bunch of paintings for this truck when I was there that summer. In what year was that? Let me look up. Two thousand in in. Uh, 2017, I was living in Taos, and so just three summers ago, or something like that, and this was bought up immediately, and all the paintings I did over the trucks were bought up immediately, so there you have that, kind of funny. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, that's, okay, this is, that was the last painting. I don't have anything from that time on, so Caitlin, um, Stacy has left, she's my techie. How do I get back to you? Can you? Okay, I can't hear you. Let me see if I can hear you. Could I, I'm not okay, sure how, so, here you are. So you want to stop sharing your screen at this point? Um, we can talk, yeah, and answer questions and answers. That, that was the last um, image. Okay. Let me Is that okay? See. Yeah, yeah, sure. Good. How are we doing on time? We Good, go. there we are. Yeah, plenty of time. Plenty yeah, of time. Yeah, we certainly do. All right. So does anybody have any questions for Leo? <laughs> It can be about anything, his work, his right. education, his inspiration. How did you all like it? Did you, what was your, what was your feeling? Did you like some parts better than other? I'm just, if you want to give me some feedback, that would be cool. I'm open. Are, are people able to just jump in? Uh, yeah, sure. It's a, a good size group if you guys uh, have a question you can either either oh, drop wanna... the chat or, or unmute yourself and and ask away i do want to show the, the painting of the truets oh okay yeah that'd be great okay let me just grab it here let me see if this is so um tell me if you can see it uh, let me see what we got here kind of oh very nice that's right. beautiful uh, by the way patty um, I did work on this little area right here. So um, seriously, since our conversation, you are totally right about that. <laughs> so, and you'll see it in person, of course. So, Leo, the process through is absolutely amazing. Yeah, thank you. Because do you want to expand on that? <laughs> well, no, but I mean, how you because because of COVID, oh. you were going to come. We're not able to come to Lafayette, so you it's true. started with the photographs, it's true. your multiple photographs, and how how you put it together, and how you chose what what to have as a background based yes. on yes. some of our travel. Things. I mean, they've done yeah. It's it's, it was, it's been a really wonderful process, and especially during this period, it's been a really great project to have to keep me focused. You know, um, so I really thank you like all of you and, and of course Kendall for being involved in this. I'm gonna put this back. Um. Uh, this is Kendall. I just wanna mention that uh, the Truett purchased the portrait 
which is supposed to be a demonstration at the art museum by Leo for at the Heart of Art fundraising uh, event that we had last February, three weeks before everything closed up. And so that didn't work out. Leo um, said he would try to figure out how some way he could do that portrait. And we um, asked our friend Ed Lausch, who has this wonderful exhibition right now in the, in the art museum, to right. do a photo session with Bob and Patty. And Leo Art directed the photo session. And then he selected right. that that photo to begin his work with. And I think you're gonna finish it up with some of the live sitting. Is that right, Leo? Exactly. They're, they're, um, Bob and Patty are coming uh, November 12th, I think it is, right? So it's a few weeks from now. And um, we're gonna have about two sittings and it will be really, really interesting, be really fun to have you in, in um, to see you in the, in, the, in the flesh as opposed to these photos. Um, so we'll see, yeah, we'll see what that brings out. I'm sure, and, and I want to have, of course, their input since um, and their feedback so that they feel comfortable with that. Well, obviously, you uh, you prefer working from life with your plein air work and with your portrait work. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it's nice to have um, with. I've done so many portraits that I I can supplement ph photography, which I do all the time, but I do like having the person there because um, it makes a huge difference. With the landscape, photos don't really translate for me for some reason. Uh, maybe it's all that atmosphere in space. I really like to respond to the nature. And so I, I, go, I will go to a site, even if it takes me weeks, the same time every day, depending, of course, weather providing. Um, when I've gone out to the coast, it's really a little bit tricky because many days it's foggy. So I have to have some paintings that are foggy and some paintings that are sunny. And I'll just kind of, you know, say, well, this is a, going to be a sunny morning or pray that it will be, you know, can I finish this painting or whatever. But yeah, you kind of roll with it. But, it, but I think it really makes sense to uh, experience, you know, uh, when, when it's in front of you. Um, there was a guy that was posing for me yesterday who loves uh, Southwest art. And there was a big show at the museum here about 10 years ago of the Taos School and their, and their um, um, clients or their uh, supporters. And Robert Henry, you know, the American kind of impressionist or post-impressionist, of the 200 paintings in that show, he had two paintings. And I think those are the only two paintings that were done from life in the show. And it was so obvious to me that they were, did they just sang in a way that the other paintings didn't have? Not that the other paintings were bad, they had what they had. It's very different. Leo, a question that I have is that when you're doing one of those out on the, you know, sort of the, 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 the water and you're looking at that, at how long does it take you to be able to capture what you're capturing, you know, because you, these don't happen just overnight and the, right, the right. environment changes and the lighting changes. How do you do that? Well, I go there um, at the same time each day. So when I was just in Fort Bragg this summer, even though it was COVID, it was a little weird being not home and I didn't stay um, as long as I thought I would. But I would, um, my goal was to have three sittings a day. So morning, afternoon, and then late afternoon, early evening. And I would go to these sites and in period, so I would rest up in between or have lunch or whatever it was, hang out a little bit, and I go to my next sitting. And um, that to me is, I mean, I just love the energy that it generated. Um, I like having more like a, I didn't have a studio there. So my outdoors was my studio. I did have a place I was renting, but it was, I didn't paint there. But I love my studio here. You'll see when you come um, how beautiful the lighting is, how magnificent it is. And it's set up um, as I've traveled for all these years and been to Europe a number of times. There is even a book called The Studios of Paris that I've had at, at one time, I guess I loaned it out. Anyway, so I got all these ideas of how to try to create my own studio, the, the best for me with what I could afford. And it really is wonderful. Um, mm. But when I go out, like tomorrow, I'll go up between four and six. That's my timing to catch the chemisa the, in the foothills. By the way, I didn't realize you were by uh, the ocean. Yeah. Is that, is that, oh, is that yeah. a real? Yeah. No, I'm is that really? 
Betty Nelson and I are traveling all over the world. And so we are. She's up in the... Is that, is that real behind you? Is that really happening? Oh. No, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, though, is that I'm going to... <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me what make it, it a little bit more... Um, we just took off and we're oh my gone god to, okay okay we're, to, we're gone to <laughs> i love it i love it sometimes we're in space i think it's so cool that you do. can you put the ocean back please i'm just kidding when you're doing one of these presentations uh, leo you can actually have your paintings in the background you're, you're, you're right that'd be awesome mm -hmm. that's a great idea do you want to show us your studio well, um, I'm not sure I'd have to carry this machine here mm -hmm. in there. I would love to, actually. I'm not quite sure if I can do that. I have to unplug things. I, I might lose you guys, I have a feeling. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> let me, let me, I can show you. Let me just see what happens when I turn it around. Um, this is my kitchen. Tell me what, what's happening for you all. So this is the kitchen. Oh, yeah. And you can kind of see that um, now we're going into the dining room. Let's see if we can see anything over there. Oh, nice. This is one of my big landscapes in the dining room. I don't know if you can see that very well. And then, mm. the, and then the, the living room is over that way towards that window. But it's a little bit hard to see. You know, my gallery, if we, if we were to go back here, there's a staircase right way back there. You see all those little portraits on the wall? Let me see what we can do here. This is my, my hall of portraits. It's kind of cool. Um, anyway. I have a gallery downstairs with beautiful um, lighting, and, um, real professional. It's really magnificent. So we could, if we could do FaceTime, I could do it on my phone and take you around. <laughs> but, hey, Leo, uh, this is Kendall. Um, there's a painting behind you that's the, oh. uh, the African-American woman. Right. Can you tell us about that? Sure, and I do want to bring out one other painting too, because when these two paintings are, are shown together, hang on a second. Um, the, light, the, lighting, the lighting is going to the lighting's not going to be so great, but this painting of this young punk, this can you see it at all? Let me see. Did you get to see her? Yeah, we see it. Okay, it's the same size as the painting of Yafa Ray of the African American woman. And I did that in Lafayette, and her parents, um, this is a little bit intimate, but you probably, nobody probably knows who it is, but they were so excited that I was painting their daughter. I think she was 16 or 17. I don't remember how old she was exactly, and she was either high school or at college, and they're both therapists, and when they saw the painting, they, they went white because they saw something in her face that really scared them. That apparently she was really not a happy camper when she was younger, and they were seeing some of that in her face mm. here. I don't see it at all. That's one of my most um, uh, uh, favorite paintings as far as people's response to it. So I, I've had a show when I had those two hanging next to each other, the painting of the young punk and Yafa Ray, the African American woman. And, um, and people, one man actually started crying because he said that the beauty in them of how between the two women, how much it moved him. I thought that was really incredible. So Yafa Ray is from New York and she, I've done, well, maybe a few paintings of her, but she's one of the best African dancers I've ever seen. And she's driving a truck now to make a living and she's making a good living from what I hear. And I hardly <laughs> ever see her anymore. I hardly ever see her. But if you, but if any of you go to um, Instagram, there's a painting of me, not a painting, a photo of me dancing with her. That's pretty, pretty cool. Um, and my, I can just give you, give you my address or it should, it's too, well, anyway, I can give you my address or it should be on, uh, is, can it be on this, uh, Caitlin, somehow, my Instagram address so people can see what's going on? Because Instagram is really easy for me. I've got a web person who does my website, but I can, I'll I can see really, if I can, I'll see if I can get a link and drop it in the chat real quick. Hang that'd on. be cool. Thank you. Uh, cool. Leo has two works in the Art Museum's permanent collection. One of them is a landscape that's uh, amazing, a riverscape of the Wabash River. Exactly. From the bridge that is now a pedestrian bridge, but it wasn't at the time that you painted it in the 80s. And the other one is this awesome portrait of 
Harold Mulhock. Do you recall okay. that portrait? Yeah, so I asked Harold if he would pose for me. He had that lock shop, you know, um, in, mm -hmm. in downtown. And he was quite a character, quite a character. And um, one of his favorite expressions was um, he would call uh, people like young buck. He's a young buck. And I, and I thought that was a really clever way of expressing someone's youth, you know. Um, I don't know if I was a young buck for him or not, but maybe. Mm -hmm. And he was, and it was, it's a really fascinating portrait. And I do want to acknowledge John Lofgren because, um, who re is still a mystery. I think he's in Hawaii. We're still looking for him. We're um, still looking too. Mo Mona Berg was the, uh, the one that told me mm. that he was, and I want to also acknowledge her. I don't know if she's on this deal, but um, that she um, was, told me that he was living in Hawaii. And Mona was the one that allowed or set up the show at Purdue way back in, in 89 or 90, it was really put me on the map in Indiana. It was wonderful. It was a wonderful show. I don't know if any of you got a chance to see it, but it was, it was magnificent. Um, it was re really special. So anyway, so Harold, what was cool about that painting too is, is we were doing it in his shop and he had all the, all this stuff everywhere, you know, and it was just really exciting. And when I did the Wabash River, you know, they closed that bridge while they were I don't know what for for a period of time I got so I got permission to go on the bridge while it was closed and was able to paint the the river at that moment and it was a really really exciting time so um yeah in, Indiana served me really well for the I know I was we were there for a short time but so much happened in that time it was it's quite remarkable it really is I'm really very honored to have had all that experience and painted some hey, really Leo Yes. Um, my name is Kathy LaFuse. I don't know if you remember me from when you were in Lafayette, mm. yeah. but I remember you going out to your house to look for the North Star to make sure you had the right studio on Drury Lane. So you were the, were you the broker? Yeah. Yep. Really? Anyway, and then what you probably don't remember is probably the day you were leaving town, um, you were painting right. um, you were painting on 26. There right. were cows, some monuments, and I saw you painting, and I have photographs that I took of you painting. And I just said, I that's me. I want that, I want that painting. And I have it in my living room, and I think of you like every day when I'm sitting there reading my books and seeing them. Oh, the nice. I would love to um, see. It's it. not anything it. like what you do now, but okay. it's a memory. Um, and for the rest of you, uh, where he was painting is where Schweitzer is now on the corner of 231 and 26 oh. West. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was so sad that they tore the monuments down because I was going to give them this painting. Wow. Mm -hmm. but but the picture. Anyway, um, I think of you often and you. um i remember being in your house and seeing todd weaver oh yes todd weaver, todd, todd. and some of the other people and i just loved it and thank you was excited so, so what, what is this image that you have on your screen Kathy? oh tc steel yeah oh uh -huh. okay yeah cool. and and the reason it's there is because i don't know i did it one time and i didn't want video and i guess it's just stuck no, okay. whatever. So, well, but um, we went down to see um, his place, and of course, it's fabulous as well. Right. Um, but that's what that is. It's his place in Southern Indiana. Oh well, I would love to see the paint, the painting sometime that you have of mine. If you could ever text it. To I, I'll me. just get your email. And I'll send it. Yeah, I'll send perfect. you a picture perfect. of it. Thank you. I'd love. Thanks for introducing yourself. Kathy. Yeah, it was it was a great um, it's a great memory in my life to have um, mm -hmm. you know seen you and seen you do your paintings and um, I remember the Thank one you. lady that was like eight feet tall and I thought oh I love it but my house isn't even eight feet tall I can't <laughs> find that. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know when we were getting ready to leave Indiana back in. Um, 94, I did a, a, a presentation at the Wells. I don't know if any of you knew about it or were there. It was standing room only. It was really magnificent. 
But the last six months I was living in Indiana, um, I sold more art and got more commissions than I did ever in my life. And f my father uh, would always, you know, he would talk to me, says, have you sold anything lately, Leo? And I would say to him, you know, Dad, you'll be the first one to hear <laughs> what, I, what I do. So he wouldn't ask me anymore. I didn't want him to ask me because it's a little bit, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, too much. So I would call him so often during those last six months that we would start laughing about how much was happening while, it, while we were getting ready to move. People- See, We loved you in Indiana. Excuse me? We loved you in Indiana. Well, thank you. Well, mm -hmm. it was, it was, there were a lot, there was a lot of positive that happened, uh, for sure. There really was. Um, being here has, I can't believe how quickly the time has gone by. I've been here since 94. And, mm -hmm. um, by the way, this is the time to be in New Mexico is right now because it's really like the days of awe of, uh, cr uh crispy mornings and evenings. And it was like 80 degrees today, but it's going to change Monday. We're going to have possibly freezing that night, but it's been for the last two weeks, it's been amazing. So like Indian summer or whatnot, it really- grew. It was 80 degrees in Lafayette today. So beautiful. Well, good for you. Um, what, and how is it gonna, is it, what's the forecast, you know? It's gonna, is it gonna drop? Cause I know it's, it's supposed to be dropping quickly. Yeah, it's gonna get cold. Yeah, it's gonna get cold. I wish it would stay like this for a while. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Well, how are we doing? Are we pretty much where we want to be, Caitlin, or what are you thinking? So, Leo, you know, the art museum would like to expand the number of works that we have in our permanent collection. Oh, nice. I'm by the works, but other works that you've painted over your career since I think our last, the last piece we collected was probably 91 or 92. Good chance, um, good chance. I think we, we need to expand that. That would be lovely. If you want mm -hmm. something from Indiana or you got to see some of my favorites throughout tonight, but I've got lots of stuff. And if you go to Inst to my Instagram, which hopefully Kate, Caitlin will give you, um, you'll see a lot of work on there. That's not, that was not- So what's important to the art museum, Leo, is that we, we try to have works from different periods of time oh, in an artist's right. career. So cool. we'll, we'll work together. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. Hey, Kendall, this is Kathy. Um, I have a note on the back of the picture um, that um, Leo painted. And Leo, you obviously don't remember this, but you painted it. You sent me it later in a frame that you thought was perfect for the picture. Anyway, I have a note on the back of it okay. for my children. This says, if you don't want this, and you know how our young people don't really want a lot of our stuff. They don't like their parents' artwork. <laughs> right, right. I said, please give it to the Greater Lafayette Museum of Art. Wow. It is written on the back of it. Well, that's so, sweet. Kendall, yeah. if you want it, it's yours. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Well, hopefully your children will want it, Kathy. No, I, unfortunately, you know how the kids are. <laughs> Okay, okay, mm -hmm. I hear you. Well, Kendall, that's really, um, that's very exciting uh, that we'll start some kind of a dialogue. Hopefully, you know, I'll keep my fingers crossed that we can, I can come out there in person and we can make this uh, workshop happen. Well, the short time you were in Indiana, you became a treasure here. So oh, we really appreciate mm -hmm. that work. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions for Leo? Well, not for Leo, really, but I would be interested in hearing Patty talk about what she sees in that painting of her mother. Oh. And where is that painting now? It's right next door to you in our, in our condo. Is um, it? I see in her eyes the way Leo captured some of the um, the sadness. She was a strong woman who, who became a divorce. Hey, Patty, you need to get closer to the speaker. It's I'm sorry. Let me get this here. Right. What I see in the painting is, is the way Leo captured my mother in her. I see, I don't think going to work. Her eyes, some of the sadness. She was a divorcee when she was 
42 and she said if i'm going to be a woman alone i'm going to i'm hmm. going to Italy. and then it's she not gonna work Sorry. And i'm taking you with me so but her ups and downs of her life and and leo just captured her so beautifully in that portrait well, thank you i talked to leo about is you know people die people die but uh, yeah. Their jewelry and with women, you know, some of that lives on in the memories of, of children, and so he captured that. And I and some of the things I have, um, and it just it me, brings me closer closer to my mother, and and she just sure. really lives through that painting. Mm -hmm. And while we were working on it, I remember when um, we put the red jacket on her. Yeah. You know that, and it just came to life. The whole painting just yeah. says, "Yes, this is it." Mm -hmm. and, it's really uh, strong. Yeah, I'm trying. I wish I could show it to you. It's on my phone, but it's not working to show you guys. So, I mean, and she traveled. Uh, she, she lived in Italy, so they, there's the Italian pottery and a Portuguese yes. tablecloth and with detailed mm -hmm. work. It's it really cool. Detail in that just brings her to life all the time. Yeah, there's wonderful detail in there that I'm sure has lots of meaning for you. Yes. Well, you'll come see it Sunday night or Monday. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and tell us about it, you know, the details and what they represent. Yeah, it's all kind of code. I will do that. I don't want to take Leo's time, but... Yes. No, no, not at all. Not at all. But I think that's a tribute to Leo that he captured those icons that are important in her life and you know, kind of transcends her life. Um, I think that's Betty, a huge compliment. Betty, uh, you. you've been such an important figure in our community for women and for Purdue University and for the whole community for many years. No, Leo is available for commission portraits. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, there you go. oh, thank you for mentioning that, Kendall. <laughs> well, well Kendall, Kendall gets his percentage. He would bring your life uh, to mm -hmm. canvas. <laughs> yeah, and and by the way, Leo, what my background is the the Wabash River. Oh, okay. What you see behind me. Oh, uh, nice, beautiful. And you know, I think lots beautiful. of people don't realize how beautiful it is. Oh, definitely. It's yeah. You know, I can I can look at that and I can see Native Americans coming and going and absolutely uh, kind of blot out the the contemporary part of it. I agree. I agree totally. Um, background is also being the dean of students at Purdue University. Oh wow! The best job on campus. Okay. Beautiful. Um, Leo, if you want, I'll, I'll put your website address in the chat as well. So if people are interested in looking at more of your work there, sure. or contacting you all your- That's good. But also the, um, the, thank you. But certainly the Instagram would be good because that has more recent work, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, I, I already posted that in the chat. Oh, so oh thank it's, you. It's there thank if you. anybody wants it, it's a direct link. Thank you, so. thank you Caitlin. Mm -hmm. So. Are we signing off? How are we doing here? Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions for Leo? Well, not I think we all have a million questions, but we ought to be kind <laughs> and not ask them all. <laughs> Leo, we're getting ready to come out there to see you guys. That's we'll right. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I, I'm really excited to see you. Leo, I want to thank you for your contributions to the Art Museum and for adapting to this new world while we were all trying to do that and still keeping you know your commitment to what you promised mm -hmm. to do that's so awesome we want thank to bring you. you here live as soon as we can i can't wait i can't wait thank you mm -hmm. okay well blessings to everybody all right thank you, and so thank, you Caitlin. thank you thank you so much leo thank you everybody okay. for tuning in um, i'm gonna post the recording of this if you want to revisit his his presentation, I'm going to post the recording of it on our website and on our Facebook page, hopefully tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that if you want to come back and revisit any part of this. Um, we'll be able to. Okay, so, guys. Thank have you all. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you.